Okay, so about nine years ago when I started my fitness business, I came from a corporate background and uh, worked in marketing and did that whole grind. And I started my fitness business and did my certifications and everything. And I said, well, wait, now I've got to promote and market. So I Googled fitness business marketing. And this guy, Bedros Koulian, I don't even think I knew how to pronounce his name. Bedros, B-D-B-B-K, <laughs> signed up for his, for his uh, email list was proceeded to be bombarded by emails from him. Anybody on his list knows, but it works. And I can say, so I proceeded to work with him um, on many different levels. It's an honor today to introduce Mr. Bedros Koulian, who has impacted, I know, several lives in here, but somebody who is truly passionate about just elevating the opportunity for fitness professionals, not just, just to be a good trainer, but how to get out there and bring more into the, into the fold, how to be more successful, how to change more lives, and how to make a living and a really good living out of being a fitness professional. So I've never been on this side of introducing Bedros, usually it's the other. So please help me welcome Mr. Bedros Koulian. <laughs> Bedros Koulian is known as the most sought-after business coach in the health and fitness industry. He's been called the hidden genius behind many of the top celebrity trainers seen on national television shows, and his marketing systems are the secret weapon used by multi-million dollar generating fitness businesses worldwide. He's famous for creating wildly successful brands and businesses throughout the fitness industry that massively increase client results, brand loyalty, and boost bottom line profits without the use of unpredictable and expensive sales and advertising tactics. Known as the renegade entrepreneur, his out-of-the-box ways of quickly building brands and businesses and boosting revenue have landed him and his clients on national TV shows, news broadcasts, and countless global business publications. He's here today to teach you a new way of doing business, making more money, and living your dream life. Please put your hands together and help me welcome Mr. Bedros Koulian. Hello, everybody. I am uh, Bedros, and uh, thank you for both sets of applause. Uh, Lindsay, where's Lindsay? There you are. Hey, let me just tell you something about Lindsay here for a moment. Um, I'm a really fortunate guy because I didn't have a lot of friends when we first came to America. Uh, I come from a communist country. If you don't know my story, I'll tell you in just a minute. But uh, through a weird turn of events, having come into the fitness industry because I was the fat kid who lost a lot of weight, didn't know his way, and once I lost the weight through workout and eating right, um, I was like, gosh, I want to help others. And so a client took mercy on me and he goes, hey, you don't know anything about sales and marketing, so let me help you grow your business so you can actually quit your other day jobs and be a trainer full time. And as he taught me that, I had the privilege and opportunity to then pay it forward. And I've gotten to pay it forward to so many great people. And one of those great people is Lindsay. Um, because not only is she a friend, but she's gone from, as she said, corporate world to info marketer to a you know, an awesome and amazing boot camp where she impacts the lives of people, um, works with PFP and the publisher, correct? Editor. Editor, sorry, you will be the publisher soon. Um, and there's a person who I've known for how long now? Seven or eight years, and she has always a smile on her face, uh, nothing but great things to say about others, and pays it forward um, relentlessly. And I really think that's, that's the secret to our industry here. The, the, this is what we do. We get into the business to help others. And uh, great people like Lindsay and Cody and Dan and Scott, who's going to speak later today, uh, Shauna Kaminsky, who, is Shauna speaking today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Now, these are people who have fast become friends of mine, um, colleagues, clients. They all started off as clients, which I'm very grateful for, that they would trust me in their business. Uh, you saw some of them in that video. Um, I'm not good at talking about myself uh, as much as I should be, and I'll encourage you to do that. And so my videographer, Rob, said, hey, I want to put a video together for you where it kind of says everything you do and who you are, because you never do a good enough job telling people what you do. 
Rob is also the guy who kind of gave me this little moniker of the immigrant edge. He goes, you know who you are? You're the immigrant edge. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, you're this guy that came from a communist country, didn't speak English, because uh, he knows my story because he works with me in my office. Um, and he goes, uh, you know, you're foolish enough to believe what your dad said, that you could achieve anything you want, do anything you want, and, and you went out and did it. Um, and it doesn't matter if the economy is horrible or great. It doesn't matter if the competition is uh, through the roof or non-existent. I am the immigrant edge, and I'll always find a way to survive. And in Rob's words, he goes, uh, he goes, you find this way of turning chicken shit into chicken salad. So that's one of my two foul words. By the way, shit should not even count, Cody. And let me educate you why. So Dan, where's Dan Ritchie? Dan, Dan's over there. So Dan sends me this email. He goes, you are limited to one F-bomb. Uh, <laughs> now, if you were, who was it? Uh, at the TT Summit last weekend. Okay, a couple of you who were at TT Summit last weekend know that there was pretty much every other word was the F-bomb, but I'm a very passionate person. I'm not as well-spoken, and I dropped out of college, went to three elementary schools, two junior highs, and two high schools. Uh, I'm probably also the only person on stage who has been involved in a high-speed car pursuit with the helicopter and everything. Uh, I was not the one in the helicopter, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, they, they did catch me, and having a boot on the back of your neck when you're laying down is never a fun thing. Um, that was in a previous life. You can imagine the chip that I had on my shoulder. So I, I might be a bit rough around the edges, but trust me and believe me, and you can ask these guys that I mentioned, uh, I, I have all of the best intentions for you, and uh, I'm here to serve, and so please be sure to ask any questions that you have of me as it relates to marketing. And here's why I talk about marketing. Marketing, business growth, self-development, sales. Lots of great people are taking the stage this weekend, and they are going to teach you better ways to train your clients, better ways to impact their lives. You know, I didn't even know there was all the different nerve cells on the bottom of our feet. I feel like kicking my shoes off, right? And it's so awesome to hear that stuff. I mean, without that stuff, we can't make, have the impact on the lives of the people but there was nothing worse for me personally, and maybe you can relate to this, than having the education, the certifications, and the desire to train people and impact their lives, but to be a fry cook and a personal trainer. And then when the holidays came around, I was a fry cook, a bouncer at a gay bar, and a personal trainer. I was like, why at a gay bar? You ought to see the way I dance, sir. Um, <laughs> No, actually, the gay bar paid $4 more per hour than the straight bar. What they didn't tell me was, are you ready for this? And I found out the very first night I worked. At around 2 in the morning, skinheads come into the parking lot and are waiting to gay bash. And so your job as the bouncer is to make sure the people leaving the club don't get bashed. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly how they danced. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway, but back to what I was saying here, Dan, Dan, Dan sends me an email and says, hey, you know, you've got a, a limit of one F-bomb or, or one foul word. And I'm saving that because and shit doesn't qualify. And the reason for that is, <laughs> allow me to educate you for a moment. When, they were, when, they, when ships were coming from Britain to the United States, they would have cow patties, cow poop in crates in the bottom of the ship as they were bringing them over. And they would use that as kindling to, to, to light fires and so on. Well, as water would seep into these ships, the cow patty would then start to get wet, obviously, and would let off methane gas. And at the first sign of a spark, kaboom, the ship would blow up. Could you imagine that? And so, she's like, that's bullshit. It's not. That's, <laughs> this is the truth story. This is the truth. And so, they figured out what was happening, and these crates of cow patties, they ended up putting really high during transit. And so they stamped... S-H-I-T, ship high during transit, or ship high in transit, shit, right? So it's just an acronym. <laughs> so you can go shit, 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 all you want, and it's just an acronym. <laughs> now, the F-bomb I'm saving, Dan. I'm saving that. So then, so my job is to educate you on the business side of what we do, because I was that guy that had to have multiple jobs to make ends meet, and then I was that guy that had my own facility had the dream facility, borrowed money, opened it up, and then realized, oh my God, I need more clients. 
And every month I was barely breaking even. Some months I was losing two or three thousand dollars a month. Other months I would make a thousand, fifteen hundred. And soon you begin to realize, oh my gosh, I've signed a lease, I've got equipment, I'm committed, but I don't have a plan to share my skills and knowledge and expertise with people because I don't know how to funnel traffic into my facility. Who has that problem right now in their business? Who could use more clients? Raise your hand. All right, thank you. So I'm going to teach you, let's get started here, the secrets to marketing to the affluent. Now, specifically, what I'm going to teach you is marketing to the affluent in this demographic, right? And so it's, it's important to know. We're not trying to market to Mark Zuckerberg. Now, by the way, if I can get done fast enough for you, if I can get done fast enough for you, I've got four things to share with you that are really kind of mindset shifts that are going to happen in your business. Um, I really believe in personal development. You have to de develop your mind because there's so much resistance that comes to us. And if we don't develop our mind, it's the, it's the equivalent of having weak muscles and all of a sudden trying to pick up an 80-pound dumbbell and trying to curl it, right? You're going to snap that bicep right off the bone if you haven't trained that muscle against resistance. And so a weak mind creates this state of fear and anxiety that when resistance is presented to you, you begin to panic and retreat. But if you're constantly working on your headspace, and here's a couple of books for both, uh, all of you uh, that I highly recommend you ought to just download and listen to on the flight home. Uh, book number one is uh, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. There's that word again, gay. The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Who's puckering right now whenever I talk like this? Uh, the pucker factor is high. I've had several people walk out before. Hopefully no one walks out today. And the second book is Psycho-Cybernetics, P-H-Y-C-H-O, Psycho-Cybernetics. Great book. And this forces you, it teaches you to break through these limiting beliefs. It's all it does. We all have these limiting beliefs. I kind of liken it to having a car and then driving your car, this nice, fancy sports car that's designed to perform, but having that emergency brake halfway pulled and not realizing that. And it just, it's not performing right. You, you, you know it's not, but you don't know why. And all of a sudden, someone's like, oh my gosh, man, your e-brake was up. And you drop that e-brake, and all of a sudden, the car does what it's supposed to. There's less resistance against it. That's what that's going to do, those two books. But if we have more time, I want to talk to you in greater depth about this stuff. But right now, let's talk about marketing to the affluent. Who are they, right? So what is the portrait of a millionaire these days as it relates to you and your ideal prospect? Well, he or she is 57 years old, married, has three children. And really, the 57-year-old, that's the bottom of the range. You know, they might, they're usually between 50 and 70 years old, like your ideal clientele here, the FAI clientele would be, right? And this is all research-based, by the way. Two-thirds either are or were self-employed. So what does that tell you? They're driven. They have kids. They're married, and they're driven. Why is this important so far? Let's talk about the demographic and psychographic of the people. Remember, when you want to extract lots of money from people, and there's nothing wrong with money extraction, by the way, if that's a limiting belief in you, in your way of thinking, you have to get over that. There's nothing wrong with money extraction, making lots of money, because the only time a person makes lots of money is when they over-deliver in value, right? The person or the organization with the most money is also the organization that has delivered the most value to society. That's it. Money's not bad, it's not evil, it doesn't care. Money is simply a vehicle to freedom. So I'll talk about money extraction, and I'll use those words, and it might create some pucker factor for some of you, but I want you to get over it, because when you extract money, it's an exchange for tremendous value. Understand that. I charge an obscene amount of money for my coaching. I sleep fine at night because my coaching clients who take action relentlessly make a sick amount of money back. And several of them are in this room, and you're welcome to talk to them. 
So two-thirds, then, are self-employed. What does that tell you? They're driven. They're self-starters, right? So you have to understand that mentality. And since most of us in here are coaches in some way, it's like working with an athlete. And so the market that you're after, they don't care about keeping them out of the old folks' home. See, if you're talking to them like, you know what, if you train with me, we're going to make sure that when you slip and fall, you're not going to break your hip or your arm or stay out of the old folks' home. You're actually offending them, right? You have to understand that. That's, that, that is not a part of their value system. Their main goal after the age of 50 is not to stay out of the old folks' home. Their main goal is to survive, thrive, and live as though they're still 30, right? Because this demographic has seen some shit, man. Right? They are survivors. Am I right? Yeah. Who is in this demographic, by the way? Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah, God bless you guys. The hardest working demographic currently living. So typically, the wives were either stay-at-home moms or teachers. Why is that important? If you're going to build rapport, you want to know where they're coming from. So now you know the odds are they're either, they were either stay-at-home moms or they were teachers. So when you're trying to build rapport, because the only time you can extract money again is when you understand how a person thinks. See, people will not part with their money until they feel understood. You should write that down. People will not part with their money until they feel understood. So if I'm speaking to you, and I go, you know what? I can tell that you're a hard-charging person. You're self-motivated and driven. You're ambitious, aren't you? Yes, I am. Versus, you know what, I can tell you want to stay out of the old folks' home and you're scared about falling down in the shower and breaking your hip. Now, they might still give the outer appearance of, you know, whatever. They're not going to storm off. Internally, they've crossed their arms and leaned back. And body language is everything. So while I'm ill-educated scholastically, guys, just so you guys know, I spend about $120,000 a year in educating myself. So I study body language. I study NLP. Uh, Wyatt Woodsmall, for example, the guy that teaches Tony Robbins how to anchor the stage, how to uh, create control and compliance of the audience. I get to carve out time at $19,000 for a day with him and ask him about the demographic that I serve, right? And so I educate myself so that I can then pass along to you on how people think, how your consumers, buyers think. And if they don't feel understood, they're not going to part with their money. Instead, they're going to give you an objection. They're going to give you the objection of time, money, or spouse, the three big objections. And if you've gotten that, you fooled yourself into thinking that those are the conditions why they're not buying. But in reality, the condition is you fail to build the right rapport because you don't understand the demographic. See, the market in here, the people in here, for the most part, are a little bit older than the market that I serve. If you come to Fitness Business Summit, and all of you will get an invitation to Fitness Business Summit, which is taking place March 18, 19, and 20 in, in uh, uh, Southern California, you'll see that the average trainer in there at Fitness Business Summit is in their 30s. And so I have an avatar in my head. His name is Dave. He's 34 years old. He owns a personal training studio that he just signed a five-year lease on. The reason he signed a five-year lease is he's ambitious and excited, and the landlord told him that if you sign a five-year lease, we'll charge you less per square foot than a three-year lease, right? And so thinking he's making the right decision as a business person, an entrepreneur, which at the time he's currently a wantrepreneur, he wants to be an entrepreneur, he signs a five-year lease, buys some equipment, now he's over his head. He's either married or he's about to get married. He's possibly engaged. And in my head, I see Dave living in this nice condo, and all he wants to do is buy a house, have a child with his wife or soon-to-be wife, and then make sure he's there to see that child. And that's when Dave typically will find me. See this 34-year-old Dave. Like I, I even have a picture in my office of him. And so when I write my emails to 120,000 personal trainers five days a week, I'm speaking to Dave. So Dave is that bullseye for me. I'm speaking to him. And that's why a lot of trainers go, oh my God, like when you write your emails, it's like you're talking directly to me. The majority of the people on my email list are that person. They're my avatar. Now you might be somewhere in those rings of that bullseye, and that's okay. That's okay. But majority of the people are the Dave that I'm speaking to. And I know my avatar so well, I know his fears and frustrations and pains. His greatest fear is that he's not going to feel like a man 
to his wife or his soon-to-be wife. And then when they have a child, they're not going to be able to live out of a house. They're going to have this rented condo or apartment. And then when they have that child, he's still going to wake up early in the mornings and not see his kid before he goes to work. And of course, by the time he gets home from training clients from his little studio, the child's asleep. See, that was my greatest fear. I'm Dave, right? That was my greatest fear. And so I could write to Dave, and I can explain his fears, frustrations, and desires to him better than he can. He's feeling it, but he can't articulate it. And so when you can explain someone's fears, frustrations, and desires to them better than they can articulate it, they feel understood. And when they feel understood, you can now extract money in exchange for value, right? So it's important to know, were they teachers? Why? So what did you do? So Mrs. Jones, what did you do your whole life? Well, I was a stay-at-home mom. Oh, great, do you have any kids, right? Now we know statistically, the odds are they probably have three kids. Oh, yeah, I got kids. How many, boys, girls? People want to talk about themselves, right? So you had a job. We know that the odds are they were self-starters. Two-thirds of them were self-starters. Well, what did you do for work? Oh, I did X, Y, and Z. Did you own the business? Or did you work for a company? Oh, I own the business. Wow, must have been something how to come up with an idea and then think up a business and then take that risk as an entrepreneur? Yeah, that was something. That's right, that was something. Like, look what you're doing. You're building such deep rapport with the person who feels understood. Like, yeah, you know what? Th thanks for acknowledging that. You're an entrepreneur. Is anyone in here not an entrepreneur? Raise your hand. And that's okay if you're not. If you work for someone, get a paycheck, that's okay. All right, that's fine. Most of you are entrepreneurs. You are risk takers, right? You're the one willing to sign a lease, which is really saying you're, I'm taking a bet on my idea that it's going to work. It's really what you're doing. Everyone else is signing the back of the check. You're willing to sign the front of the check. You'll always pay yourself last, making sure that your staff and employees and the rent and the electricity all gets paid before you take yourself a check. Like you are the pioneer. You're a risk taker. And so that person who was a self-starter would appreciate the fact that you acknowledge that. And you have to build rapport with these people, with anybody, with any demographic, before you could ever extend, take money. See, we immediately go to this phase of, well, look, you, know, you don't want to fall, slip and fall in the bathtub. You don't want to uh, end up in an old folks home with pipes and tubing coming out of your body, and so you ought to train with me. No, that's actually pretty offensive, man. I'm not going to do that. So their typical net worth is 1.6 million. That means you sell everything they have, 1.6 million. By the way, this is a typical net worth. The average is 3.6 million. Now, the reason the average is so high is that there's a large percentage that are worth over 10 million, right? Baby boomer markets have the most discretionary income. So 80% of them are also first generation affluent. What does that mean? They are those pioneers. They didn't inherit mom and dad's business. How great would they feel if you can acknowledge that? Wow, you know, you're the first generation who decided you're gonna take a risk in your family. That's awesome. You are a pioneer. And they believe in education and they believe in educated people. This is important because how they perceive you is going to determine whether they're willing to part with their money or not. If they feel that you're ill-educated, if they perceive that you don't value education, they won't part with their money, and in exchange, they'll give you an objection, the objection of time, money, or spouse, right? The greatest value that they have is freedom, lifestyle, and experiences. That's it, freedom, lifestyle, and experiences. Because they've lived without things, so they're good with not having things. They want freedom, lifestyle, and experiences. And so as you're selling them, as you're talking to them, as you're drawing the word picture for them, as you're asking them, what would your best day look like? You would wake up and do what, Mr. Jones? Right? What would it be? Your, your best, ideal, perfect day. Since you said you were part of the demographic, I thought I could pick on you here. Best day is to get up, charge hard, and make a lot of money. Sir, how old are you? 75. 75 years old. 
But shouldn't you be retired and taking a pension or something? Not ready to jump in the box yet. Thank you so much. God. If I could be half as ambitious as you are when I'm 75, I'll have met my goal. Thank you. Like, this is the gentleman that you are selling to. He gets it. Do you feel 75 when you think about that number? No, no, no. They are tight wads. They are tight wads. However, they are willing to pay for the best in class, and you need to understand that. This, by the way, is real psychographics of your ideal buyer. Who can relate to all of this right here? Raise your hand if you're in this demographic. Okay. Almost a third of the room. Right? So it's important for you to know who your avatar is. Because I'm going to teach you marketing to the affluent, but without knowing who the hell you're marketing to, what they want from you, it's like a shotgun approach. Well, I'll try a little bit of this. I'll do a brand. I'll call it silver sneakers. <laughs> what? I don't want that shit. I'm saving the F-bomb. <laughs> Ship high in transit. So what do they want from you? To not be treated like an old person. That's common sense. To keep them feeling alive and young. To keep them functional, active, and independent. Right? Remember we talked about freedom and experiences? Not injury-proofing themselves. They, now look, there's a byproduct of your training them is to injury-proof them. But that is a need. That is not what they want. What they want is to keep going to Europe and traveling. They want to wake up in the morning and charge hard like Jimbo here. Right? I do. You do. We all do. That drive doesn't go away. You're either born with it or you're not. And the people that come and seek out your service, let me tell you, they are into life performance. They want to optimize their well-being. They're not part of that group of people who want to sit on the lazy chair and slowly work their way into that box. They are hard charging. And so they want to be functional, active, and independent. That is the want that they want. Oftentimes, we end up selling them the needs. You don't have to sell the needs. Just give it to them. Just give it to them as a byproduct. You don't even have to explain why you're doing the overhead squat test. You don't have to explain why you're asking them to train with their shoes off. You're just gonna. They're gonna get the desired outcome, right? They are. They're gonna get the benefit, but what they really want is independence, freedom, experiences. Whoops. Of course, they also want a clean, modern, and safe facility from you. I can't tell you, because I travel the world, how many times I get, you know, I'll put on Facebook or Instagram, you know, off to Phoenix to speak at the Functional Aging Institute Summit. Ten different offers. Come work out at my gym, come work out at my gym, so I'll, you know, work out at one place and I'll work out at the other place the next day. And I imagine they know I'm coming because they offered and I said, I'll be there. What's your address? And I walk in and it smells of broccoli, of chicken, which is great. I eat that stuff. You should too. But your facility shouldn't smell like it. There's stains on the carpet. I don't know what those stains are, man. I hope it's protein <laughs> shakes. I don't know if it's protein. The marker board is canted. Why? Why? You can't just straighten out a marker board. Perception is reality. Plastic chairs lining the front of the place. You can't. I mean, you know what that tells me? If you got plastic chairs, are you about to fly by night? And then you're going to ask me to pay for a year of training up front? See, because the affluent have the money to pay for an entire year up front. But having the money to pay for it, having the desire to pay for it are two different things. When they come in and they see that you look like a fly-by-night place with odd smell, electrical wire sticking out, big piece of paint missing off the wall, a chunk of drywall missing because the battling ropes hit it, and you decided to just turn a blind eye to it, that says a lot about you and your facility. Remember, they are willing to pay for the best in class. They don't have a lot of everything, but they have the best of everything. 
Do you understand that? That's my dad's generation. I study my father. I'm his biggest fan. The guy escaped communism and brought us here. How do you not study that guy? Right? See, I've got 15 watches. He's got one really good watch. Not to say that I don't have great watches, I do. <laughs> I got a lot of his, his weird habits. The difference is I'm from the generation of I want more. And now it's funny, I turned, as I approached late 30s, I realized I just kind of started giving things away. And I'm becoming more of this curmudgeon -y dude, and I could see how I'm going to become that less is more, you know, talk less, do less, uh, by way of stuff, and it's more experiences. I see the tides changing. I'm turning 41 this summer, and I just see it changing. It's really neat uh, to be aware of that. But it's really important, guys, for you to show them that you have professional staff service and you're going to deliver professional experience to them because they want the best in class. They truly do. And it's your job to deliver that to them. They have no issues with giving you the money. And remember, as Dan so eloquently pointed it out to me a couple months ago, he goes, it's a captive audience. They're not getting any younger. So it's not like all of a sudden they're going to go, hey, you know what? I achieved my goals. I lost the weight. I'm now a 33-inch waist. Peace. Like, they are getting older. Like, you've got a lifetime client if you can meet these demands, which, by the way, are very realistic. So we just get used to that chunk of wall missing. We just get used to the smell of broccoli. We know that stain is, is protein shake, and that stain is someone's vomit. No, that's just sweat from someone doing the planks. They don't. They don't care. It doesn't matter. It has to be presentable. You have plastic chairs. It looks like you're about to stack them up and leave, right? What is your facility saying about you? The smells, the sounds, the sights? So how do you attract them then? So now we know who they are and what they want. How do we get them, right? Well, we know rapport building is important, right? We want them to get to know, like, and trust you. If you don't know, like, and trust me, you're not going to believe a word I'm saying up here. There's a fellow speaker who talks about marketing and selling, not in the fitness world. And he talks about his bankruptcies. He gets up on stage and he talks about his bankruptcies that he's had, the multiple divorces he's gone through, the alcoholism that he had to fight. And he goes, the reason I do this is because somewhere in the audience, there's someone else who's gone through divorces, typically 50% of the audience, has fought demons of addiction, and have gone through financial crisis. He says, before I can even sell you on my idea for marketing and selling, and why it works, and it's superior to what you think you should be doing, I have to create a bond with you. And it's important for that bond to be created. And so the person who's divorced in the audience goes, oh, okay, well, if he's on stage and he's divorced and he can talk about it and he made it, you know what, I have a greater affinity to him. Affinity is very important. People want to know that we're all alike, that they're understood. I'm going to keep using that word a lot, to be understood. Why is that important? If Jimbo speaks to me very fast and he's leaning forward and the words are chasing one another, I'm not going to speak to him as though I'm swimming in molasses. He's going to be turned off by that because he's a hard-charging entrepreneur. He's type A and driven. And his perception of me might be, mm, I don't know, man. I don't think we're going to click because uh, I just don't think you've got the energy that I'm looking for. Even though you offer the service and potentially the outcome that I'm looking for, we're not going to click. So I have to then mirror him so that he can feel understood. If he's leaning forward, I have to lean forward and speak to him passionately about what he wants from a training program. On the other hand, if he's leaning back and he's reserved, you've got to mirror that, right? People will buy from you, and they'll do business with you, and they'll re refer others to you when they feel understood. So they've got to know, like, and trust you. We know that's important. You've got to be the best in class, and so how do you do that? Well, we'll talk about that here in a second. And you've got to be a person, in their eyes, a person of authority and celebrity. Let me explain this. 
Because only then are they willing to part with their money, right? When the no like and trust factor has happened, when they perceive you as the best in class, and of course, you're an authority and celebrity. Now, there's three categories. There are the generalists, the specialists, and the authority celebrities. The generalist would be your family doctor, right? Makes about $110,000, $130,000 a year. In fact, it's in his title, general practitioner, right? Now, the specialist is a guy who went to the same school as him, put in the same amount of time as an MD as well, but he's a heart surgeon. See, he specializes in one thing, and he does it better than anybody else around him. So we go from the generalist to the heart surgeon who's a specialist, and the average specialist in the medical field makes $620,000 a year. Look at that, a 6x increase. And then you look at a Dr. Oz, who wrote a book, ended up on TV, and he is considered an authority and a celebrity. Who knows what Dr. Oz's net worth is? In the millions, right? In fact, it's in the eight figures. Now, is he a better doctor than the guy who's a specialist and who's currently practicing while Dr. Oz is on TV? No, yet you'll buy everything that Dr. Oz talks about, from the green coffee beans to the wacky little sauce that you rub on your body to, to whatever it is that he's freaking talking about. That was freaking and not fucking. <laughs> and so, your job, your purpose in your community, no one's saying you ought to go write a book and end up on TV on a daytime show. I get it. That's a high barrier to get to. It'd be ideal, it'd be nice. However, locally, thanks to a few things, you can be considered a person of authority and celebrity in your community, especially to a niche market, right? In my industry, in the fitness industry, to 120,000 personal trainers worldwide, I'm considered a celebrity, a person of authority. It cracks me up because I'm just that foreign kid. That's, that's how I see myself, right? I just happen to have the skill that I can also teach that gives you the ability to make money when you're freedom, which I realize is a very important skill to have. I get that. But I have manufactured my authority in celebrity. Let me just say that again. I have manufactured my authority in celebrity. Does that make sense? So how are you going to do it? First of all, there's Facebook. Now, Scott's going to talk a lot later this afternoon about Facebook marketing. But I'm going to talk to you about the organic stuff real quick. Remember, you can have a fan page, and you also have your personal page. Your fan page can have an infinite number of subscribers, people who like your fan page. Your personal page can have up to 5,000 friends. Now, what would I do? I would use both, especially if I'm in a local community. Now, I've got 61 or 62,000 fans on my fan page, but I serve globally, right? If I'm in a community, any town USA, 5,000 friends is plenty, especially if I can make sure that I only friend the people who are my ideal prospects, that I want to build a know, like, and trust factor, get them to see me as the best in class, and then want to position myself as a person of authority and celebrity, right? 5,000 people? Holy crap. So what would I do on my fan page and on my personal page? Two to three times a day, I would write fitness tips. I'd give away an awesome, healthy recipe. My wife has this book called The Recipe Hacker. You know what she did? She just found uh, 102 of America's favorite comfort foods and hacked those recipes and made them gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, refined sugar-free, and grain-free. She removed five, what she calls the deadly ingredients, and now she's a recipe hacker and had a, is, is a 20, uh, sold 21,000 copies of her book, The Recipe Hacker, in four and a half days by making that one shift. Overnight, she became an industry celebrity, right? I have one. You have one. You have a copy of her book. <laughs> there you go. 
I won't tell her, but I see nothing wrong with you taking a picture of a particular recipe from that book, right? And then just, hey guys, here's, and if you wanted to give her a link to Recipe Hacker, that's fine. If not, just take a picture and hey, here's from, one, from a recipe book that I have called the Recipe Hacker, click. Think about it, everybody is looking to have dinner that night. And it just so happens that around 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you're the one that swoops in and saves the day by putting a healthy, want to know what's for dinner? Snap, right? That's it. Who has Fit Pro Newsletter? Raise your hand. All right, that's great. About a third of the room. We've got recipes in Fit Pro Newsletter, like thousands of them. Cut and paste one, put it on Facebook. Want to know what's for dinner? Bang, right? Courtesy of your personal training or fitness center. All of a sudden, you are now step by step edging ahead of your competitors. While your competitor's like, hey, buy my stuff. You're like, hey, here's a recipe for tonight for dinner that's missing these five deadly ingredients. It's the same delicious comfort food that you're used to, but you're not gonna get fat and bloated afterwards by eating it, right? Tips, you can Google fitness tips all day long and cut and paste. You know fitness tips, right? Ask a question. Survey your followers. What is the number one piece of gym equipment that you like to use? And let them comment, because as soon as you start dialogue, you're the person that starts the dialogue, you are the authority. Every person who takes the stage today is all of a sudden the authority. You know what always surprises me, because I speak at a lot of events? I'll just be that foreign kid in the back of the room hanging out for two, three days. And all of a sudden, I'll speak, and I'll get off stage, and for that next day, until I fly out, or if I'm there two more days, they're all over you. All of a sudden, authority and positioning was established with a quickness, right? You can do that online, guys. You can manufacture that. Ask anybody who speaks publicly. You're nobody, and then all of a sudden, you're somebody. That's a cool feeling to know that you can do that out there. So tips, recipes, articles, before and after pictures. Remember, again, what are your competitors doing? They're just saying, hey, buy my stuff because I'm a nationally certified personal trainer. I'm a level three at this, a level four at that certification. 15 years experience. Here's a link to my website. What is that the equivalent of? Walking into a bar or a gym or church and going, you, you're going to marry me. Grabbing her by the arm and taking her with you. She's going to go kicking and screaming, right? <laughs> Jim's like, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> on the flip side, I'm like, hey, you know what? You seem very pleasant. Can I buy you a drink, right? And maybe there's conversation. And maybe I can actually keep her attention long enough where she's willing to give me her number at the end of the night. And maybe, just maybe, I work up enough nerves to give her a call and ask her out on a proper date. And maybe, just maybe, we go on a few more dates and now we're holding hands, and we're kissing, and she goes, you know what, I want you to meet my family. And all of a sudden, I get to know, like, her trust her, and she gets to know, like, and trust me. And as she does, she introduces me to her family. See, that's courtship, right? We do that on the offline world, but we forget to do that in business or in the online world. Instead, we just vomit out information, bullet points about our education, who we are, what we do, here's a link to my website, go get him. No, no, I'm not going to go get him. Instead, if you're the one constantly posting before and after pictures, twice a week, before and after picture, and then with a the little caption at the bottom, hey, I want to really congratulate my client here, Susan. She's lost 26 pounds in the last eight weeks with us. You know, she comes in here with this mindset that she's going to dominate her workouts, and she does. And in fact, she motivates and inspires others. And then you tag her. Guess what's going to happen when you tag her? And now that's on her Facebook wall. All of her friends are going to see that. And all of her friends, which typically... On Facebook, the average person has 142 friends. Of the 142 friends, 76% of those friends are local. They live in the same community. What does that tell you? Now you're marketing. And what did you do? You're doing something really cool. You're showing an actual transformation. You're showing proof, demonstration of proof, where others are just saying, I can deliver the outcome. Now, have we all seen the Ginsu knife commercials, right? If they just went on those infomercials for 30 minutes and like, you should buy this funky looking knife, it cuts through everything. And just for 30 minutes, like, you should buy this knife. It made of, it's made of 1042 steel, it's heat treated, it bends, da 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 da. For 30 minutes, they're just talking about all the features 
of the knife. But you know what they do instead? Benefits. Thank you, sir. He takes a leather shoe and he cuts through the leather shoe. And then he takes a hammer and he cuts the head of the hammer. And then he takes a tomato and he drops it on the blade and it cuts it so thin and he slaps it against a newspaper that you could read the newspaper through the slice of tomato. <laughs> Wait, Bedros, you stay awake at night watching infomercials from the early 90s? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I'm that weirdo. Why did they do that? Pause, rewind. What did he just say before he did that? Why did he read that? Why did he slap it on that part of the newspaper and read that part out loud? Right? He didn't slap it on the obituaries. <laughs> he didn't slap it on the part where it says the economy is tanking. He slapped it on the part where it says, we just launched a space shuttle to the moon because people believe in, in that. They believe that there's hope in that. We're going to the moon, right? There's a reason for every little thing in marketing, folks. Every little thing. At Fitness Business Summit, there's a reason the U.S. flag is on a certain part of the stage. And there's a reason why when I speak about the things that you want from your business and the things you want to achieve and the freedoms and the experiences you want, I'm where the flag is. I'm anchoring that side of the stage. And then when I talk about the doom and gloom of competition and fear and that you might lose your business if you don't understand marketing and selling, I'm on the other side of the stage. Because as you anchor one side of the stage over and over again with positivity and fear, scarcity, and doubt with the other side, now when I go to sell you something, where would I be? The positive side, exactly, right? It's like, whoa, Bedros, that's creepy, that's weird. Listen, what I'm selling you, for the record, I haven't been anchoring shit here, so don't panic. Like, what is he selling me? Oh, my God, I'm brainwashed. Don't, don't, easy, take it easy. I got nothing to sell you, right? The point I'm making here, there's a purpose and a reason for everything, right? And so on Facebook, you've got to do these things. And, of course, hopefully, as Scott gets up here, he's going to talk to you about creating pages that offer low-barrier offers, programs that are under 30 days long, under $100, that eliminate that whole, I can't afford it, and I can't commit to that long. What are they really telling you when they tell you they can't afford your program? They're really telling you they're not willing to pay a few hundred dollars a month for a long period of time until they know, like, and trust you. So then, why don't we offer them a low barrier program that says a 21 day rapid fat loss program for $67. Like, but that, I would never charge that low. Listen, take it easy. We do that all day long with Fit Body Boot Camp and then convert people into $300 a month programs, $197 a month programs for 12 months, for 18 months, 24 months. People want to know that I can come in on a short-term program and invest a little bit of money, and if I don't like it, I didn't sign a long-term contract. That 21-day rapid fat loss period or the 14-day fat furnace program that I created or the 28-day flat belly program that I've created for our Fit Body Boot Camp owners, those are all low barrier offers that just allow someone to try the program out to feel what the workouts are like, to feel what the energy is like, the community is like, and gives the trainer, the owner, the opportunity to build rapport, to build credibility, to establish authority, so that before those 14, 21, or 28 days are over, they can sit down and have a consultation and convert that person into a long-term tribe member. You understand that? That's infinitely important in your business. Facebook is a platform to do that because as you're adding tips and recipes and articles and before and after pictures and as you're building a list by having a low barrier offer, you're running a Facebook ad that goes to an offer. The offer might be, come try us out for a week, absolutely free. Just enter your email address. Why do we want to enter their email address? Well, so we can communicate to them via email. Why is that so important? Because when you have people on an email list, you now have a captive audience. People go, gee, Bedros, you're all over the internet. I see you everywhere on the internet. I'm like, really, where? I see you on Facebook. Well, that's because I target personal trainers with my ads, right? And I get them to like my fan page. And when they like my fan page, I run ads to my 62,000 fans on, fan, on Facebook. And then they're like, man, and I get emails from you. Well, that's because you've opted into my email list. And then when I go to these websites, I see ads for you pop up. And that's because you've gone to my blog before and we've put a cookie 
on your computer, just a little pixel. And I don't know, Scott, are you talking about pixels? Yes. So Scott's going to be talking about pixels. But Facebook has this little tiny little pixel that you put that anyone who's landed on any one of your sites has this little cookie on their machine that if they go onto these random sites or on Facebook, they see your ads. So to that person, you're everywhere. But I'm only everywhere if you're a trainer. You see? And that's the trick about it. And that is called front of mind awareness, which I was going to talk to you at the end, but that's really important because if I'm everywhere, then I must be the person that you've got to do business with because this might be a sign from above if I'm everywhere. <laughs> right? Think about that. So what do you do in your email communications? If you're on Facebook and you're the one always adding value and goodwill, by the way, like, well, B told me I should make, you know, put recipes and tips and before and after pictures, so I'm not going to sell. No, 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 sell. Scott's going to teach you how to do low barrier offers, how to get an email onto your email list, right? If I had another five hours, I could sit here and draw that out on marker boards, pull up actual sites and pages, et cetera. Scott's going to teach you all that stuff. Got an awesome lineup of presenters. But building a list is not the only thing you can do on Facebook. You can also drive people to a low barrier offer page where they pay your $67 for your 21-day program right away. And recently, a few months ago, we figured out something new. The little web page that the ad drives people to for the 21-day uh, rapid fat loss program, instead of clicking the Enroll Now button, taking them right to the shopping cart, they now click the Enroll Now button, and it says, enter your email address, step one. Step two, we take them to the shopping cart. Why? Everybody's going to push the Enroll Now button, but when they get to the shopping cart, 72% of the people abandon the shopping cart without ever buying. So now we capture their email address and then send them to the shopping cart. All of a sudden, one page is now selling and building an email list, isn't it? So that if they didn't buy from us, that's okay. We now have time via email to get them to know, like, and trust us. And what do we do with emails? We send them, again, more tips and tactics on how to flatten your abs. How about a subject line with, do you like Starbucks? Everyone's going to open that email up. Do you like Starbucks? Well, I took the time, and the email could go, I took the time to go to Starbucks, their website, and I uh, researched their five highest calorie drinks. And I don't know if you know this or not, but it's easier to drink your calories than to eat them. You can consume more calories drinking than eating in a shorter amount of time. And so if you drink these five deadly drinks from Starbucks, I want you to stop it. But I'm not here to deliver bad news because I love Starbucks and I go to Starbucks every day. But here's the five alternatives you can get instead. I did the research for you. Again, while the competition is like, buy my stuff, I'm the best trainer. You come to them with knowledge, with education, with case studies, with information that they can use. Remember this market likes to deal with people who are educated. Don't you come off educated if you went to the Starbucks website and did the research and presented the facts, and you know that they all drink Starbucks, so let them know you're drinking all this sugar, and that sugar, your body's the greatest chemist, and it converts that sugar into fat. And that fat makes you slower. And when you're slower, you can't get on a bike, you can't go hiking, you can't experience the stuff you want to experience. And if you want to go hiking by the waterfalls, you're not going to be able to do that. And fat is a carcinogen, and it actually deteriorates your body faster. And I know that if you're on my email list, your goal is life performance. You want to stay young, be fit, have your freedom, live your lifestyle. And so I want you to keep enjoying Starbucks, but these are the five alternatives you should drink, and they'll list them out. What a great benefit you just did. How many variations of that email can you send them out? And it's not going to take more than a couple months before you, your list is a few hundred or a couple thousand big, and this email list knows, likes, and trusts you, and then you're going to send them a low barrier offer, like it says there, L LBO, right? And here's the ratio, by the way. For every four pieces of content you put up on Facebook or email, you're going to make one offer. It goes content, 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 offer. Right? We're going to deliver goodwill and then make an offer to join one of our, come try our low barrier offer program. So how else do people become authorities and celebrities? Videos, right? You want people to go, oh my gosh, I see you on Facebook all the time. I get your emails all the time. But what I figured out recently, which completely, completely caught me by surprise, this was now about two years ago, is that as I hired Rob as my videographer and works for me full time, 
and he really upped the quality and the production of my videos. The content is the same. I still teach marketing and selling and, and, and mindset, right? But it's in a lot cooler environment. He's like, hey, let's take your race car, zip up and down the streets, da -da -da, let's go bowling, and then uh, you, you can talk at the bowling alley, and then we'll bounce to your office, and you'll do some magical stuff on the marker board, et cetera. The quality of the production has gone up, but the content has stayed the same. The amount of feedback we're getting from people when they see me in person is ridiculous. It's no different than as though they saw you on TV. And by the way, when I was on Gym Rescue as the consultant, and we converted one of those failing gyms into a Fit Body Bootcamp franchise, I asked the producers of Gym Rescue, which they modeled after Bar Rescue on Spike TV, I said, I'm curious, how did you guys find me? I said, well, we Googled fitness business expert, and your blog came up, and then we saw a video thumbnail of you speaking on YouTube, and we figured you have all these YouTube videos, you must be the expert. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you for the big fat check, for the contract we have here with Spike TV, and uh, thank you for agreeing to convert one of these locations into a Fit Body Boot Camp. They gave me the power to spend $420,000 per episode to convert these gyms. I got to pick and choose which gym we're gonna shoot, right? And all because of one Google search, guys. They did a Google search, my blog comes up. So someone, imagine that, someone does a Google search right now for local personal trainer, your website comes up. If you don't have a way for them to get on your email list, you lost them. In my case, they clicked, they went to my blog, they saw a video thumbnail, they clicked it, they went to YouTube. I'm speaking about this, I'm speaking about that. I have 100 videos. If they looked at like the other 95 at the bottom, it's like me and my kids, right? Hey, we're at the fire station, right? But at the time, like the first top five or 10 are me talking about the business of fitness. And they decided right then and there, he's the expert, he's who we want. I got to name my price. And so it's critical for you to make these videos. And now you can upload these videos on YouTube and Facebook. Now what do the videos need to consist of? You could be in the kitchen demonstrating how to cook low fat, low carb foods that still taste delicious. You could be in your facility with a client who's seen amazing results. So imagine the video starts off with, hey, I'm Bedros Kulian, and here we are in Fit Body Boot Camp Chino Hills, and this is my client, Susan. Susan has lost 26 pounds in the last eight weeks doing our afterburn workout programs. Now, Susan and I are going to demonstrate the top three exercises you could do at home to get a flatter, flatter tighter midsection. All right, Susan, you ready? The first thing we're going to do is go into a plank, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use her to demonstrate while I'm talking about how to do this, keep your butt low, suck your belly button into your spine, etc. right? Look what I just did. In that one three and a half minute video, I said who I am, what we do, Bedros Kulian, Fit Body Bootcamp, Chino Hills, right? Afterburn training program. I don't just say our workouts, because then I'm like everybody else. We have a USP, a unique selling proposition. We have our afterburn workouts, right? And then what did I do? I overcame an objection or a doubt they might have in their head. Was, yeah, but are you really that good? Yeah, here's Susan, she lost 20 some odd pounds in eight weeks. I just brought in testimonial, living, breathing human, right, to demonstrate for me, and she is, and then what do I do next after a video? And this is what you're all gonna do? So if you like this information, I want you to click the link right down below, right below this video, and go to my website to get more information on how I can work with you to get you in awesome shape. And then they take the call to action. If it's on YouTube, they're gonna click the link here. If it's on Facebook, they're gonna click the link there. Right? Simple enough. And you should be pumping out one video a week. One video a week. Three emails a week. Two Facebook posts a day. That's your formula. You do that for 90 days. It may sound daunting, but I promise you, after the first 30 days, it's gonna be so easy. And this is what you tell your clients, right? They come to you like, oh shit, man, I'm so sore, I couldn't even sit down on the toilet because the uh, and the uh, and then I went to pick up my kid, and ah, uh, ah, uh, right? You're like, listen, if you just, just stick with the program, your body's gonna adapt, you're not gonna get as sore anymore, those microscopic tears in your muscle fibers are not gonna be as painful as, as they are today. You just need to hang through the first couple of weeks. Isn't that what you tell your clients? Like, keep coming, you can do this, I believe in you. And when you do, it's gonna get easier, better, faster, right? Well, guess what? The same thing applies to you. 
So the objection I might be hearing from you right now is 90 days, are you kidding me? Would you do something like that for 90 days if I could promise you an additional $100,000 a year in income? That's $8,333 a month more. Would you? Does anybody have a pulse in here? <laughs> you should. Lindsay did. Dustin did. JR did. Cody and Dan have. Did I miss any other coaching clients? Oh, there they are. Hello, the beautiful Dawn. You can do this. You can do this. That's the formula there, guys. You have to build authority. And let me tell you, this demographic is on Facebook. They're on YouTube. They're reading their emails. They're active on the internet. Don't think they're not. I see it all the time. I'm very aware of my surroundings. So now I'm going to have a couple minutes. I'm going to go through these four things real quick, and then we're going to break you to lunch. Thing number one, answer this question. Is competition healthy? You're wrong, and here's why. Competition is not healthy. Raise your hand if you think you're the best trainer in your community. Okay, the rest of you need some help with confidence and self-esteem. <laughs> Get a good therapist. Those who raised their hands, if you raise your hands that you're the best trainer in your community and you also agree that competition is good and healthy, I say you're wrong because if you are the best trainer in the community, if someone accidentally discovers another trainer in your community, another gym, another fitness center, then you are actually saying that it's okay for someone to go have a lesser experience and accidentally pay more or even the same. See, I believe I'm the best at what I do, at helping fitness professionals grow their business, win their freedom, make more money. My job is to make sure that anyone who even perceives themselves to be a competitor of mine, to dominate them. See, if, if, if competition is healthy, and these are not my words, these are from Grant Cardone in 10X Rule. You should read a great book called The 10X Rule. There it is right back there. I gave a copy to Scott. Grant Cardone, 10X Rule. You only read that, though, after the other two books, because otherwise it's not going to make sense. Your head has to be right for it to accept the rules of 10X. Does that make sense to you? If competition is healthy, he says, then domination is immunity. You have to dominate your community. If you are the best at what you do, you have a fiduciary duty to make sure that people don't go to anybody else but you because you are the best in class. My job is to make sure that anyone who thinks that they can compete against me, to break their will to be in the fitness business coaching industry. Gee, Bedros, that sounds hard. No, it doesn't. They can either come work for me, they can go work at another gym if they want, if they don't want to work for me, or they can go work at McDonald's. But they are not allowed to compete against me. No one is. I will outmarket them. I will outwork them. I will outspeak them. I literally flew in this morning to speak. I was changing in the bus. I had a ball cap on, so I schlacked my hair in the restroom as the ladies were cleaning. I said, don't even bother leaving. I'm just going to schlack my hair. Buttoned up my shirt, and here I am. Tomorrow morning, I fly back, and I meet with the venture capitalist, right? No one's going to outwork me in this industry, right? I will always be here to serve you. You have to dominate your competition. You have to crush your competition in a healthy way. And if they are better than you, then they have that obligation to crush you. So you have to set the bar high. Thing number two, there's average and there's excellence. It doesn't take a lot more effort to go from average to excellence. 211 degrees, water is boiling. It is extremely hot, it'll melt your skin. 212 degrees, water becomes steam, and it creates locomotion, it moves a train. One degree of change. See, most people think that, shit, to get to where this guy's talking about, I have to have the, all this entire mindset change, business change, my habits and rituals have to change. No, man, it's just one tiny little degree. Let me tell you, there's not a big difference between you and your competitor right now. You just go, er, right there, just start making one post a day on Facebook. How about that? And you'll see a difference. One degree of change is all you need to go from average to excellence. And that's the difference of $100,000 in your first year. And then I want you to have this different mindset about things. There's the orchid, who many say is the most beautiful flower on the face of the earth. The orchid. Does anyone know what an orchid is? And then there is the weed, right? The typical weed that grows out of the cracks of cement, concrete, ice, metal. I've seen it growing out of a metal pipe once. Weed. Doesn't need water. It could freeze. It could be hot. Doesn't matter. 
Weed will grow. It'll thrive, right? Now, everybody thinks the orchid is pretty and beautiful, and so I want to be an orchid in my life. No, you're wrong, man, because an orchid is also very fragile. Too much water, not enough light. Oh, the room temperature is just a little fucked up. I mouthed it. I didn't really say it. And the orchid dies. But the weed, the weed thrives, right? The weed thrives. You have to be a weed because in business, as an entrepreneur, there's that little guy sitting at Facebook headquarters with his finger on the disapprove button. So that when you, am I right? My coaching clients, yeah, there's, right? My coaching clients, no. There's this guy, he's got, I'm telling you, I'll, I'll even describe him. He's, he's got this pop belly, you could see the bottom of his, it looks like a belly shirt because half of his skin is hanging out, but it used to fit him at one point, but all the jelly donuts. And so he's got a little bit of like sugar on that finger and he's just waiting for you to run that ad so that he could disapprove. And to him, it's just a fun little game, disapprove, 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 right? But the weed goes, hey man, I'm gonna outthrive you. I'm gonna keep running different ads, writing different copy, making different landing pages until my ad is approved because I have a duty to help people in my community, to serve people, right? The orchid trainer goes, oh man, Facebook disapproved my ad. What do I do? I guess I just have to close down. <laughs> no, you don't have to close down. You're competing against that fatty, right? You have to look at it that way. So you've got to be a weed. And if it's not Facebook, it's, it's the city hall who says you can't have so many cars if you're doing group training. You're like, but I do it at five in the morning. The parking lot is freaking empty. It doesn't matter because we're the city and you have 2,000 square feet. 2,000 square feet means you can only have six parking spots. And you say you're going to do group training with 20 people. Sorry, you can't. But people are getting fat. They're dying. Yeah, we, we don't care, right? So what do you do? You go, hey, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one training. One person at a time is going to walk into my facility. Guess what? No one from the city is going to walk in and go, hmm, five in the morning, let me just see how many people are training. Why? Because they're eating jelly donuts or they're asleep, right? <laughs> but you're going to have resistance. And so you have to think like a weed. You have to thrive because you've got this mission. If you're just dollar focused, and wait, wait, B, I thought you're dollar focused. I am dollar focused, but I'm more mission and vision focused. The dollars are a point system. It's just a byproduct, right? That tells me how many points I have how many people I've served, how much impact I've made on this world. I love nothing better than my, my man from Alabama. Sir, what's your name? Mike? Then I'm standing there and he comes to me. Hey, we've never met, right? He goes, thank you so much. I'm from Alabama. I was making $60,000 a year. And what was that last year, if you don't mind? Not bad to double your income. And he goes, because I've started following you and using your products. Well, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. But I thank you for taking the action on that. My point is, between going from 60,000 to 120,000, how much resistance did you have that you had to pull out your weed powers, right? That's it, you have to thrive. Adversity is gonna come at you, but you can't operate like a pretty little orchid. You have to operate like this stubborn weed that is on this mission to dominate because you have a greater purpose in life, which is to help people. And the byproduct of that is a crap ton of money, and money is the vehicle to freedom. See, one time I was flying back from Denver, I was really stressed out. It was when I was uh, parting ways with a, with, with, a, with, a, with a business partner. And I texted my assistant and I said, hey, I'm gonna stay in Denver because I don't even wanna get on a plane and deal with an airline until you can get me first class seating. It's only a short flight, so I don't usually take first class, but I was just really stressed out. I said, in fact, I want the whole first class, buy out the entire first class. So I stayed in Denver three more days until she was able to buy out the entire first class and I flew in solitude, because I needed that. See, money allows that level of freedom, right? Money also allows me to help Marcus Luttrell's fund, the Lone Survivor Foundation, and to help fund the Patriot Tour that takes place all across the country, right? Where Rangers and Navy SEALs speak to civilians like us and let, the, let us know what it really takes, what the cost of freedom is. So where I'll also fly first class and take up the entire first class when I'm stressed out, I'll be able to also help a cause that's so near and dear to me because I believe in the American dream. I believe in freedom, right? So you can do whatever you want with your money. That's what I do with mine. And number four, you have to be coachable. You have to be coachable. You can't be stubborn. You can't sit there with skepticism. You have to be coachable. You have to take action. Action. It's the most important thing you can take. You have to get off the bleachers and get on the field, right? General Norman Schwarzkopf said, inaction has cost Americans more, more money 
than not taking action, than making no decision, right? Indecision has cost Americans more money than making the wrong decision. Because if you take action and you realize it's the wrong decision, you could course correct, do the opposite, right? If you just sit there and do nothing, you freeze up, you seize up, and money gets wasted, you get older, opportunities pass you by. And the reason I tell you that is I don't know if Dan and Cody are gonna launch a coaching program or not. And I hope they do. And if they do, every single person in here should apply for it. It is the single biggest game changer for your business, I promise you. Because I spend money every year on coaching, from mindset, to business, to learning how to buy traffic, to how to scale, how to outsource. Because as an entrepreneur, you're an island. See, all your friends have jobs, you're an island. You can't go tell them about your business woes because they go, hey, F off, all right? F off, I don't wanna hear about the fact that you're your own boss. But when you're in a coaching group with other like-minded entrepreneurs, all of a sudden you're no longer an island, you're amongst your peers and you grow together, you lift each other up. So it's important, you ask your clients to be coachable, you ask them to hire a coach. Here's my challenge to you, to hire a coach this weekend. Thank you so much.